Let us pray. God of life, we are the soil where you scatter the seed of your word. May it take root in us, grow mightily, and bear good fruit. Amen. My house backs up to a small wooded area, maybe the size of about a football field. We have a lovely backyard, and then beyond the yard, there's 75 to 100 yards of unblemished trees, plants, wildlife, and even a little stream. On the other side of the woods is a street. And all winter long, my family and I can peer through the barren trees and watch the traffic going by on the street beyond inside our warm, cozy house. This summer will mark the seventh year of our living in the parsonage, which means that we have seen quite a few summers turn into autumn, and autumns turn into winter, and winters turn into spring. Which is to say that every year, without fail, sometime between late spring and early summer, there comes a day when we look up from what we're doing and suddenly notice that we cannot see through the woods to the street on the other side anymore. It's as though one night in late May or early June, all the trees and plants in the wood take some kind of steroid and overnight, they become so lush and so green that we can only see a few feet inside the woods. We had some friends over last weekend, and we were sitting out on our back deck when one of our friends asked if our house backed up to Lemonster State Forest. And we laughed, knowing, of course, that it does not, but also appreciating the fact that this time of year, it certainly looks like the house could back up to a state forest, given the thick and prolific growth of that little wooded area. This is the kind of growth that Jesus was talking about. Of course, having a child is much the same. The first time I came to LUMC for my interview, I was only a couple of months pregnant with Esme. John and I were over the moon to be pregnant, and we had this pregnancy app on our phones that would tell us each week how big Esme was inside of me. So one week she would be as big as a sweet pea, and then the next week it would be a blueberry, and then a raspberry, and then a grape, and so on and so forth until she grew to be supposedly the size of a watermelon and she was born. Of course, that was only just the beginning, because now she's the size of a small boat. And I think to myself on a daily basis, how did this child get so big? <laughs> this too is the kind of growth that Jesus is talking about in Mark chapter 4. It's the kind of growth that is dramatic and exponential, like a forest in bloom, or like the rapid division of cells that creates a human life. And also, it's the kind of growth that cannot be forced or coerced, but that comes about in God's time, through God's tending, independent of human timelines and efforts. Kind of like waiting for winter to be over, or waiting to get pregnant, or waiting for a child to grow. As a pastor, I am constantly struggling to remember that my job is to plant seeds, and God's job is to make those seeds grow. So often I forget, and I default into striving and hustling and working as hard as I possibly can. None of which is necessarily bad. It's just that according to Jesus, this is not how the kingdom of God works. It's how the world works, certainly, but it's not how the kingdom of God operates. Jesus says that the kingdom of God is more like a farmer 
who plants a seed and then gets into bed and sleeps through the entire growing season only to wake up when it's time to harvest and finds that that little mustard seed he's placed into the ground has grown to the size of a two-story house which is to say that the kingdom of God is created through grace, not works. Trust, not hustle. God's power, not ours. For those of you who, like me, are deeply invested in the growth and vitality of the church, it is as though Jesus is reminding us that our job isn't to make God's kingdom grow. It is simply to plant the seeds. And because of that, we have permission to rest in God's love. It's okay to sleep like a tiny baby in the arms of God's grace, trusting that while we rest, God is at work taking care of everything. Beloved, the growth of the church is not on us. We have a part to play, absolutely. We are called to be seed planters and excellent seed planters at that. But the growth stuff, that's not our job. That's God's job. And when we can trust that God is at work creating prolific growth, even when we can't see it yet, God grants us tremendous peace. Amen.